Day two of the revelations taken from leaked documents and once again Labour ministers are in the firing line. It's been revealed that the Hull East MP John Prescott has claimed thousands of pounds in parliamentary expenses for claimed repairs to the Hull. Pounds over four I think years. the report has misunderstood the system. And according to today's leaked report, taxpayers' money has been used claimed to keep it that way. Pounds on a central London flat. Its expense claims include 312, 210, 2,400, 580 pounds. The second bill of 112 pounds for more repairs to a toilet seat. In May 2009, British politics was thrown into turmoil when the Daily Telegraph broke the first story about the MP's expenses scandal. This triggered months of revelations and controversy that sent British politics into crisis. But was this just a media firestorm, focusing on drops in the ocean of Britain's financial crisis? And did the people really care as much as the media made out? In one last attempt to wriggle out of the upcoming exposures, Harriet Harman, then leader of the House of Commons, tabled a motion which would exempt MPs from being disclosed. This motion was ultimately unsuccessful, so it was announced that the details would be published on 1st of July 2009. These details were to be censored though, before the Daily Telegraph obtained full uncensored copies. The key areas that the Telegraph focused on as being subject to abuse included nominating second homes, redesignating second homes, renting out homes, overclaiming of council tax on homes, evading tax, furnishing other homes, renovating homes while standing down from office, and the overclaiming of food. Some of the claims are ridiculous. For example, 49p on a chocolate Santa. The UK's trust in politics was severely damaged as a result of these outlandish cases. Such other claims included a glittery toilet seat, jelly deals, a wooden spoon, a lemon, an Ikea bag, a packet of Tampax, Jackie Smith's pornography, and Bill Butler's one pound charity donation. Ridiculous, maybe, but was it all just blown out of proportion? We asked members of the public if they felt they were directly affected by the MP's expenses scandal. No. No, it didn't. It affected the way we voted, but not um, sort of us personally, no. Yes, I think it did uh, directly affect me, simply because uh, it, uh, it showed us a lack of confidence in our politicians, uh, of all parties. <coughs> no, I, you know, I mean, I, the way I look at it, um, I think everyone's affected the way expenses are. Well, I think it's affected everybody in the, the country, really. Um, I think it's quite shocking when it came out. And I think, you know, it's going to take a while to sort of uh, move on from it, really. Well, I don't think it directly affected me, but I think it has possibly made us trust less the politicians around us because we trusted them to make our country better, but instead they waste taxpayers' money on things like duck houses. And, yeah, it's just not good. general public are the losers, and I think that they've ripped everyone off. You know, so uh, you, you lose a lot of faith in politics, you know, so I'm not happy. Yes, I think they took money out of my pocket. Um, you know, you know, they, were, they, were, they lost my trust in the fact that they were meant to be you know, looking after us and they were lining their own pockets. Um, no, not directly, not within my family household, although it was something we talked about. Due to the public's keen interest in this event, the media was affected in certain ways. Welcome to Question Time. Tonight, we're in Grimsby. Newspaper sales increased during this period, and the televised political debating programme Question Time hit their highest viewing figures since the show started. During this week, dominated by the rows over MPs' expense claims, I have the Housing Minister, Margaret Beckett, Theresa May, the Shadow Work and Pension Secretary, Ming Campbell, former Liberal Democrat leader, the UK Chief Executive of McDonald's, Steve Easterbrook, and the Assistant Editor of the paper which broke the story of who claimed what, Benedict Brogan from the Daily Telegraph. During the show, there were outbursts of audience frustration towards the panellists, such as Margaret Beckett, who reportedly claimed £600 for hanging baskets. OK. The, the woman in pink there on the right. 
I'm just very angry, that's all, Mr. Dimbledy. Uh, Mrs. Beckett, are you going to pay back the £72,000 that you've taken after your mealy mouthed answer trying to explain yourself? And, Mr. Campbell, how the hell do you get through £800 a month on food? So, evidently, the public cared a great deal. But that's hardly surprising. We're an easily persuaded bunch. The main question is whether the media handling of the event had any influence on people's opinion on the matter. And do you feel that the media's coverage of it was fair? Yeah, I think it was fair. I think uh, they showed the full extent of it, which I think is what the public needed to see. I think it was. Yeah, I think it was fair. I think it was, but um, it's hard to know who to, I'll be honest, you know, come up to the elections and that. Didn't really know who to go for, because I don't think you can trust any of them at the moment. I think that newspapers began to detract from the main message and simply started personal attacks on MPs such as David Dawes. Yeah, because um, there was lots of interviews like this on the street about everybody else talking, you know, members of the public talking about it, and then all the MPs got to say their thing too, so, yeah, I think so. Um, yes, I, I think sometimes the media does go too far over certain subjects, but in this case I think it had to be rooted out and the MPs in question had to be taken out because we want people that we can trust running the country. I don't really care about it, to be honest, but I got a bit annoyed with it filling the news every day. Don't really agree what the MPs were doing, to be fair, if you want my hum humble opinion. But um, I think, the, in all honesty, the media coverage is intrusive and unfair. Um, but I think they get away with far too much. If it was anybody else, they would have been arrested and locked up. Um, I don't think the media coverage of it was fair and that because I'm increasingly worried more than I'm worried about um, the political scandal of, uh, of uh, the expenses scandal. I, I'm more worried about the interference in the media in anything they can get their hands on. And I think a lot of it was um, a media circus to um, create uh, material for the furtherance of the media. And I think that's an increasing problem in today's society. That everything is driven by the media. Overclaiming or not, surely it achieves nothing if a top MP who is good at their job and steers the country well is forced to resign. Would a simple apology and repayment have sufficed? The media dragged the story on for far longer than needed, milking it to the nth degree. It was claimed by The Guardian that the Daily Telegraph, who originally broke the story, sold an additional one million copies over the month following their first story. We're slaves to the media, and we blindly think what they tell us to think. We open our eyes to the fact it happens, but close them directly it starts happening again. We're suggestible. It doesn't take much, and it never will.